morning everyone. Welcome to my little channel, Thistle Heart Creations. And my name is Karen and I live in the UK. Welcome back if you've been here before and a very big welcome if you're a new subscriber. I've had a few of those since my last episode, which is great. So it's lovely to have you all here this morning. As you'll possibly hear, I've got a bit of a cold. Well, when I say a bit of a cold, it's actually more than that. I'm feeling pretty rotten. But I really wanted to make today's video. So here I am, got my cup of tea, jumper on, and uh, cold and flu capsules will hopefully kick in soon. So please excuse if um, there are a lot of pauses and a lot of sips of tea, but I think I'll need them to get through uh, all the talking that I'll be needing to do this morning. And <clears throat> I'm hoping to keep it shorter than last uh, episode, uh, just to save my voice. <laughs> so yes, uh, it's been a busy month. Uh, lots of things going on, a lot of crafting going on. Um, just looking at my notes, I actually did make notes this time just to keep myself on track and remind myself what I haven't talked about. And from what I can see, yes, I have three finishes I need to talk to you about. Um, so it's a bit of a mixed bag today. I've got some cross stitch to talk about. I've got some knitting to talk about uh, and some purchases that I've made as well. Uh, have I done any knitting? Yes, I've done knitting as well. So yeah, been quite busy. Uh, across those uh, three crafts, which is normal for me. Um, I dabble and and I've got several projects on the go and different things. Also have quilting on the go, but I'm not going to show you any of that today because um, there's no progress on what I showed you uh, last episode. Um, I was just thinking the best way of doing it is the things that I've been busy with or enjoying um, in November, I'll stick at the end of the video, uh, just some photographs and some, some short films on um, my trip up to Scotland to visit my dad. So I'll put some nice things in there. The lantern parade that was at the cathedral, I'll put some short videos in there. And just some other pictures that um, are in my photo photo collection on my phone that I think you might like. Um, so yeah, I'll put that at the end. So let's get started. The first thing I'm really excited to talk to you about this morning is my new design, um, which I spoke to you about last month and said that I was in the, in the finalizing stages of it and really looking forward to sharing it with you all. And uh, yes, it's, it's finished. I haven't stitched the model yet, that'll come later, but uh, it's finished. It's uh, the charts all ready, it's ready for release. And I was planning on releasing it in on the 1st of December, but then thinking about it, I'm just too excited to, to not release it. Um, so I'm thinking I'll probably press the publish button on my website and in my shop tomorrow uh, but if I can hold off if I can contain myself I might wait until Sunday but I doubt that I'll be able to wait till Sunday if I'm honest <laughs> so keep an eye out but I am going to show it to you now and it's the third in my little series that I've got going on uh, mm. to do with the antics of Margot the mouse and uh, Yes, I'm really, really pleased with this one and I hope you like it too. I think you will. And as I say, it will be going live in the next couple of days, depending on if I can contain myself. So I'm going to hold up the iPad um, and hope that I can avoid the ring light. But if I can't, I'll switch the ring light off and then I will show it to you. Um, I haven't printed it off on paper because I don't want to waste my ink and uh yeah so here it is no no i think do i do spotlight on like i did last time <laughs> no let's put off let's put off the ring light that's better right here we go <laughs> so there is my new design 
Um, <clears throat> I'll zoom in a bit for you so you can see. There it is there. So that's Moggo the Mouse at Christmas time. And yes, I will be uh, very excited to be stitching the model for this one um, and putting up, putting it up in my collection. I won't have it stitched for this Christmas. There's just no way that's going to happen this year, but uh, she'll certainly be ready for next Christmas. So yeah, she'll be, um, <clears throat> I'll keep calling it she. Uh, talking about Margot the mouse, but actually I've called this design Merry Mousemas and uh, Yeah, it was a lot of fun making it and Choosing all the colors and I'm just really really pleased with it and <clears throat> Also as with all my other little designs like this um, You can use each of the sections on their own to make a small uh, or a little ornament or a gift tag for somebody um, so yeah it's it's quite versatile so there we go my new design right um, <clears throat> ring light back on <laughs> I don't know if the ring light makes any difference actually um, because I'm sitting in the conservatory I've got a lot of light around me so yeah, maybe it's something I need to look at in the future that I don't actually need it. But for now it's on, because I need every bit of help I can get in the looking like I'm not half dead department. Okay, I need a cup of tea, a sip of tea. Right. <clears throat> so that's my new design. So while we're chatting cross-stitch, let me show you what I bought at the um, Bristol Stitchy Day that I spoke about last episode, but I forgot to get it out to show you. Um, and it was the pattern and the fabric that I bought from Megan at Coffee Crafts, um, completely enabled by Morty. So uh, I'm just gonna lean forward and grab that. <clears throat> now, we're gonna have a bit of glare again, but I don't want to take the fabric out of the packaging or the pattern, so bear with. That's the pattern that I bought. I'm just gonna come in from the side and then the ring light will avoid us a bit. You've all seen this, I'm sure, if you're a cross-stitcher, because it's quite a popular one. And this is the fabric that I bought from Megan. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned in the last episode, this is my first ever piece of hand-dyed fabric. So, uh, looking forward to seeing what it's like, uh, what the effects are like, because usually I stitch on plain fabric, and I, and I like plain fabric. I like the way the stitching just stands out, and it's not... Um, my fear is, for me personally, that I would find... If I didn't choose the right fabric, the designs would disappear into the background. And I know that's something that I probably need to rather see for myself before I continue thinking along those lines. Um, because when I do see people stitching on hand dyed fabric, it always looks fantastic. Uh, but just for me, I always worry, oh, well, I like it once I've stitched it, you know, for myself. Anyway, I'm sure this one's going to look brilliant because... Uh, I don't think this one would actually be suited to a plain fabric. So yeah, perhaps it's to do with the design. Um, I don't know, I'm just waffling. All I'm saying is I don't have experience in stitching on hand dyed fabric. So this is gonna be um, a new adventure for me and I will report back. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not gonna be starting this this year. This is gonna be a start for next year, definitely. Right, do I show you my cross stitch purchases now or do I show you my purchases at the end? Um, I think let me show them to you now because I can see them. So while they're in my mind, let me show them. <clears throat> okay, 
So the first uh, cross stitch chart that I've got here, <clears throat> these are both from Luca S. This was, uh, I was enabled to get this by seeing Charlotte's uh, piece that she was working on at the Bristol Stitchy Day. And a lot of us fell in love with it. And I was really keen to get it on the day and then thought no just just hold back and see if in a few few weeks whether you still really want to get it or not and yes I kept seeing it I kept looking at it so I've jumped in and purchased it and it's one that I may or may not start this Christmas I may keep it till uh, next year and and pick it up sometime through the year so that's the first one it is called the happy dragon and um, this one, it, it's it's a kit. It comes with the Ada fabric in 16 count, white. And just look at that little dragon. Absolutely gorgeous. And there's all the threads. <clears throat> Honestly, I'm so looking forward to doing this. I know Charlotte stitched hers. She uh, did one color at a time and did the color completion for that color before moving on to the next. Um, I may try that. I don't know, I'll see. Um, see how I go uh, at the time, but <clears throat> really looking forward to making this one. And uh, yes, I have a, an idea of who it's for. And I'm sure if you've watched my last video, you'll probably get a good idea too. <laughs> So there's the happy dragon. And honestly, this was not an expensive kit at all. Um, I didn't even get it in, in the sale at the time. So yeah, if, it, if it's still available and there's a sale on wherever it is that, that has it in stock, you might be lucky and get it even cheaper. Um, I think I paid about 12 pounds for it. So as kits go, really not bad. So of course, while I was in there having a look at getting the happy dragon now where did i get these from i can't remember um anyway it doesn't matter if you go onto google and you google it a whole lot of um shops will come up where you can get it um so while i was in there of course i saw something else and so uh i, I couldn't resist this one either there's definitely a theme here for um cute happy things <laughs> and um, <clears throat> this is one that I will put in my stash and look forward to making and again another kit by Luca S and not very expensive either and this one is called Mouse with Fur Tree and it is on Ada also 16 count white and here he is oh let me put this off again <clears throat> so cute <laughs> I mean who could resist that really I don't think anybody could and well, there's all the threads lots and lots of different colours right so those are my cross stitch purchases <clears> hmm <throat> Carrying on with cross stitch now, I'm going to show you my work in progress that I've got. Um, I did talk to you last week about the others that I'm working on, which was Silent Night and uh, Victorian Charm. Not a lot of progress has happened on them, and you'll see why when I show you everything else that I've been busy with. Um, but I have put quite a good amount of work into. Um, I'm not quite sure what the actual name is. Um, it's my kit by um, RTO. And it just has a number it's not actually given a name um i need to look up the name of the painting itself it's by wendy andrew but Art rto have kitted it up um and i see her being called all sorts of different things um but uh, yeah so i need to find out the actual name <clears throat> but if you're actually looking for the kit then um, i'll give you the number so <clears throat> The kit that I'm working on is this one, this one here, and it's M908, that's by RTO, and it's in the series In the Kingdom of Fairy Tales, 
Now, there's another one that accompanies it, which I'm seriously thinking of putting on my birthday or Christmas wish list, uh, which will be coming up in a few weeks. And uh, yeah, it's really lovely, so lovely. I'm a big fan of Wendy Andrews art. And <clears throat> so let me show you my progress. Now, I just realized while I've, I've got everything else ready this morning, I have not taken this out of the hoop. Um, <clears throat> so let me very quickly get this, get it out. Sorry about that. Okay, doke. And now it's a bit wrinkly, but you'll get the idea. <laughs> There's my progress. <clears throat> now. There'll be lots of little fluffy bits sticking out. Just ignore them. That's how I stitch. Um, I like to carry a bit of thread underneath, stitch over it, and then nip it off. Um, I don't like to flip my pieces over and thread the thread through the back if I can help it. So, yeah, my work always looks a bit fluffy <laughs> while I'm working on it. But So, yeah, I've, done a, I've progressed a lot because in my last video, I'd only done this top section here. So since I've last seen you, I've done all of this here and thoroughly enjoying myself. So yeah, um, <clears throat> let me give you a bit of details about this. It's white Ada. I enjoy stitching on Ada fabric because truthfully, it's a lot easier on my eyes. <clears throat> and um, I've recently been to have my new um, eye test and got my new glasses and I'm having a bit of a love-hate relationship with my new glasses but anyway uh, we'll see how I get on with that and I mean you don't need to know all about the problems of me and my glasses but anyway um, <clears throat> yeah the artist is Wendy Andrew the chart design is by RTO and the thread inside is DMC and the Ada is 14 count so that's why it's such a pleasurable stitch because the stitches are nice and big and it makes for nice stitching in the evening um, as well as in the daytime. I didn't tell you about Luca S's threads they're both these ones here they're both anchor threads. No, I lie to you. This one is anchor threads, and this one is Luca S's own threads. <clears throat> so yeah. Sip of tea, and then we'll carry on. Can you believe it's already 19 minutes? No wonder videos are so long we have to cover a lot <laughs> um oh dear right what am i going to talk to you about next um <clears throat> let me talk to you about what i've finished i haven't had any finishes in the cross stitch department but i have had uh two finishes in the knitting department and a big finish in the crochet department now, if you're a cross-stitcher and you're thinking, okay, at this point, I'm going to switch off and go somewhere else, um, then thanks for sticking around. But please, I would actually ask you to, to stay because I can just keep chatting while you stitch, um, provided you like the sound of my voice and what I have to say. But I do invite you to stay because <clears throat> um, who knows, you might see something else that's of interest to you. And I do suspect a lot of cross stitchers are actually multi crafters. Um, so, yes, uh, you're welcome to stay. Um, let me talk to you about um, the first finish that I had. It was a beanie uh, for my son. He asked on the, I think it was the Monday, if I could knit him a beanie. Um, no, it wasn't the Monday he was leaving on the Monday yeah I think it was the Monday before that or the Tuesday it doesn't matter <laughs> um and I sort of looked at him like I don't 
don't think I can finish a beanie in a few days because by the time I've ordered the wool and it arrives. Anyway, I did manage it. <clears throat> and yeah, <laughs> it just flew off the needles. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. But yes, it was a bit of pressure knitting, which um, I haven't had to do for a long time. In any case, the pattern itself is great. Just as I say, flew off the needles. Um, I don't have it to show you this morning because he is wearing it because he had to go off um, to Europe. And um, so it's gone and he's using it. But I will put a picture up over here. Uh, and then you can have a look at it and uh, admire it and all that. <clears throat> I'm really waffling today. I'm really sorry. I'm trying my best to be as perky as I can be. <laughs> In any case, um, the yarn that I used was a King Cole Aran weight. And it was a mix between um, acrylic and wool in a bright green, which is what he asked for. Now the pattern I used is a free pattern um, and it's called, I think it's called Jason's Cashmere Hat, <clears throat> Cashmere Beanie. Let me just see, where have I put it? Well, I've got the website, so I can tell you that in the meantime, and then I can show you a picture of it. Well, you'll see the picture over here. So. Oh my word. <laughs> yes, it was the green, I've called it the green cable beanie, but it's actually called Jason's Cashmere Hat, and it's by Sweet Fibre Yarns. The designer is Melissa Thompson. And I used King Cole Fashion Aaron in the color Shamrock. So yeah, really bright green. So the website, I'll link it below, but I'll tell you what it is now as well. It's www.shop.sweetfiberyarns.com. And then if you go on there, you'll be able to find it. So that was the first finish. My next uh, knitting finish <clears throat> was this one. And I did show this on my Instagram. And here it is here. And I'll put it on if I can. I don't know. Might be a bit of a jiggle about. Let's see. <clears throat> Sorry about the sniffing. Oh, and there it is. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Now this was knitted. Well, <clears throat> first of all, I got the wool when I went to the Malvern quilt show. I hadn't planned on going to the quilt show, but I woke up on the Saturday morning and saw an advert for it popping up and thought, that's where I want to go. So yes, it was a completely spontaneous trip out. Went with my husband, we had such fun. He does like coming to these things with me. I know a lot of um, ladies were there and saying that their husbands don't really want to go to these things. And I would never force my husband to go. But yeah, he, he genuinely enjoys going around and looking at things that people have made and seeing what I'm interested in. And uh, yeah, so we had fun. And yeah, lunch afterwards is always a, a good ending to an outing like that. So yeah, we had a very nice lunch afterwards. So, um, and then, um, yes, while I was there, there was a shop called Brian's Best Wools. And this is where I saw this scarf. It was actually in a beautiful turquoise uh, yarn, but I wanted uh, something a little bit more warm and cozy. So I chose this um, yarn and <clears throat> it's by Debbie Bliss. The, the yarn, its uh, range is called Angel and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a mohair and silk blend. Um, now it doesn't have a color, it just has a number, 15013. The pattern for the shawl was just a, a leaflet of four different patterns. Here it is here. I'm not going to show you the inside because it is a paid for pattern. 
and <clears throat> the one that I've knitted is called the large triangle scarf with eyelets and pico edges. Another one that just flew off the needles. And I say flew off the needles as in it was really easy and quick to knit, but it also nearly flew off the needles <laughs> because I was using my um, Zing um, needles and uh, yeah, the silky thread, the silky yarn on the metal needles meant that they, it was really quite slippery. So I really had to uh, watch what I was doing um, when doing, especially the cast off and, and making the eyelets and things. But such an easy pattern and really enjoyable to do and loving having it on. Um, I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels and up against my face, it's not scratchy at all. It's beautiful and soft. Uh, which is important for me because years ago when I was a child my mum bought me a um, a fair isle jumper from the Shetlands and oh my goodness I loved it it was a beautiful rich green um, with white and, and navy or black can't remember which of the two that was but it itched like mad. So you always had to have something on underneath, which fair enough, in winter you always did, but it was just around the neck, just that little last cast off row that used to itch. So I'm very keen to avoid that kind of experience. But this is just, I think it's the silk, um, beautiful. So I highly recommend this. And as I say, I got this wool from Brian's Best Wools, but you, I'm sure you could get it anywhere else. Do I keep this on now? Do I take it off? It's so nice. <laughs> no, I'll take it off. <laughs> I don't want to overheat. <laughs> gosh, I'm going to strangle myself live on the channel. Oh, gosh. Right, here we go. <laughs> Definitely not going to be able to work on a shopping channel demonstrating things, am I? Because I'll just strangle myself while I'm busy. Anyway. Right, so those are the two knitting finishes. The last big finish I've got to show to you today is um, the, uh, sorry about that. <coughs> I had to sneeze. Um, what was I saying? The last big finish that I had uh, for this month was my uh, crochet along that I was doing. And if you're a crocheter, you'll have seen this all over the show. It's the gingerbread blanket, the Christmas gingerbread blanket crochet along by Serdar. And the designer was Lindsay from Lottie and Albert. Uh, the wool I used was all my own stash. Um, I wanted to make it as a stash buster. And yes, it, it definitely did that, definitely helped. And it was really um, rewarding to make something and not spend any money doing it which at this time of year is, is a bonus. Anyway, um, before I show it to you, you will, if you are familiar with it, let me show it to you. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's just a video that they've got. So that's what the finished item should look like. So you can see around the edge there's a gingerbread border with icing and bobbles <clears throat> and what I've done with mine is <clears throat> I've decided not to do the big brown border with the icing and the bobbles in because the blanket is already as big as I want it to be I didn't want it to be any bigger because it's only for a small person. So a ginormous blanket would actually be too big. I have done a bit of a border of my own around the edge, but I, I followed um, Lindsay's design for the edge of her original blanket. I've just chopped out, as I said, that big gingerbread border. And I've added the border then onto the peppermint, um, <clears throat> the candy cane borders so here it is 
I'll start over there with this corner with the peppermint whirl and work my way across to that corner with the peppermint whirl and then doing the best that I can I will show you the rest it was so much fun honestly so much fun and again I was pretty much crocheting to a schedule because I want this finished um, for this Christmas. So yeah, I'm pleased that it's done and very pleased with how it's turned out. And as I say, this section here, there would be a piece about this much of gingerbread still and then this border. So all I've done is added some border onto the candy cane stripes. And I'm pretty sure Lindsay won't mind um, a bit of adaptation to her pattern. Um, because, yeah, uh, you know, I think most designers don't mind. People make things, some people follow it exact and others adapt it because they don't want it as big or they don't like the colours. And as I say, in my case, it wasn't that I didn't like the colours. It was just I wanted to use what I had in a stash. So that's what you see here. Um... These are all the colours that I've used uh, just to use what I have. Sorry, I know I'm repeating myself this morning, but I'm, I'm doing my best. <laughs> so let me see. What else do I need to talk to you about? I've spoken to you about the cable beanie. I've spoken to you about the shawl and the gingerbread blanket. Now, <clears throat> last episode, I mentioned that there was a top secret quilting um finish that I had and I still haven't heard if I can talk about it with you yet so um, hopefully I'll be able to do that in my December episode but I just need to hear or get the go-ahead from Emma Bradford to share what it was that I worked on for her and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to showing it to you uh, so yeah that will come in December or maybe I'll only be allowed to show it to you next year what else have I got? Right, Works in progress. I've shown you my um, cross stitch. I've got a little knitting work in progress, which is a pair of socks for my husband. These have been go on the go since, oh, I think it was October. And it's not that I'm slow at knitting socks. I'm not. It's just they kind of took a back seat because I was busy with everything else. <clears throat> but I've done one. And I've got another one on the go. Now, this yarn is West Yorkshire Spinners. And the colourway is Kingfisher. And my husband chose this colour himself when we were in uh, the knitting shop in Broadway. Um, it's called So You Knit, I think. Is it? Let me check my list. So You Knit Crafts in Broadway. Wonderful shop. If you're in the Broadway area in the Cotswolds, definitely pop in. It's rammed full of gorgeous yarns and everybody in there is super, super friendly. Um, so you'll have a great time if you visit there. Broadway is a fantastic village. Is it? Oh, yeah, it's a, quite a big village. Um, but there's just so much to see and especially at Christmas time. If you're in the area, beautiful with all the Christmas lights and... Um, lovely places to have tea and have a walk and yeah so definitely pay so you're not craft to visit let's talk about some nitty purchases that i've made i received um, a newsletter from suzanne of green lumpkin yarn and in there she was talking about her christmas range so um i went off to have a little look i love suzanne's yarn and I've bought it in the past. I've always really enjoyed it. Um, just the colours that she uses, just vibrant, uh, just like she is. You know, they are definitely Suzanne colours when you see Suzanne's yarns. And um, yeah, so I ordered All Is Bright, which is a sparkle sock. And it's 75% merino, 20% nylon. And here it is. Isn't it fab? Just look at it, all those colors and it sparkles. 
Now I also ordered myself a little treat, <clears throat> which was a bag charm that Suzanne makes. Suzanne makes uh, bag charms and stitch markers and I ordered myself this bag charm. Just so cute. And I know it's a Christmassy sort of charm, but actually I can use this all year, which is really what I wanted. So yeah, so I treated myself to that. Oh, this is my winter stitching bag. This is a bag by Stitch by Mrs. D. And I use it in winter time. So cute. <clears throat> I bought this a while ago, so I don't, so she doesn't have these in her shop, I don't think anymore. But keep an eye out, because you never know. She might make more of these at some point. Um, but all her bags are fabulous. So yeah, definitely keep an eye on Stitch by Mrs. D's shop and shop updates anyway <clears throat> i ordered this yarn from suzanne along with the bag charm and i had some surprises in the parcel which was so lovely because i was having a really rubbish day and um this cheered me right up so what arrived in the parcel was this beautiful mini in the most gorgeous aqua color Isn't that just so pretty? And a little stitch marker. So cute. Yeah. Other nitty purchases I've made. I have gone down a bit of a rabbit hole. I saw, and I'm, I, <laughs> I don't want to sound like I'm blaming Jeanette from Crafty Clegs, because I'm not. But this is the second thing that she's um, shown that I've thought, oh, I have to I have to make that. The first one was the gingerbread blanket. Uh, just seeing how much fun she was having and how much fun um, Davina from Little Workroom Crafts were having with it. I, I got stuck in and I'm so glad I did because it's going to make a fantastic gift. Anyway, um, she started doing, and so did um, Bell and Stitch, the Arn and Carlos Christmas stocking knit along. And I saw them doing it and I thought, it looks so nice, but no, I've got enough things to do. And it's been years since I've knitted Fair Isle. Um, but then I kept seeing it popping up and eventually I thought, do you know what, just make it. Uh, Yes, it's been a while since you've knitted in that way, but it's good to have a challenge. It's good to have a reminder that you can actually do these things. And so I've got some yarn and I've downloaded the pattern and I'm going to do it. Now, it started a few weeks back. I'm deliberately waiting till the 1st of December so that it can be my December Advent knit along. And uh, so I've got the yarn and I've got the pattern all ready. Now, the pattern is free at the moment. So if you head over to their website, um, go onto their blog and then you'll see all the links and immediately go to the last day's blog post and download the whole pattern before the 1st of December because on the 1st of December, they've said it's becoming a paid for pattern. So if you want it free, don't dilly dally, just go get it, save it, put it away. And even if, you know, you only make it next year or something like that, um, and at least you've got it. Now, let me show it to you. I'm sorry I'm wibbling the camera, but I've got the tripod on a little table and I've made the mistake of putting the iPad on it. So whenever I get it off to show you, it jiggles. Okay. Right, let me put off the ring light again. <clears throat> so here it is. That's their website. On and Carlos.com. No, on Carlos.com. A R N E C A R L O S dot com. And that's the stocking that they have released for this year. And as I say, it's free until the 1st of December, so don't hang about. Go and get it. 
let me show you the yarn that I've bought. Now, <clears throat> I've not bought huge expensive yarn. I've not bought yarn that's 100% uh, wool because I wanted to make sure that I was going to enjoy this process. And I'm sure I will. Um, so I'm going to do my stocking and my husband's stockings um, using the wool that I've bought. And I bought nice wool. There's nothing wrong with the wool I've bought. Um, but I, I just didn't want to invest a lot of money in something that I may knit the first one and go, no, I'm not carrying on with, you know, another one or uh, I'm not making any more. We'll, we'll see. But I've, I've got a feeling I will enjoy it because um, I do like a challenge. I've gone with this red. So it's the Starcraft Life DK. This color is Cardinal. The Stylecraft Life DK. And this is shingle and then the green I couldn't get a green that I liked I didn't want that bright <clears throat> shamrocky green I wanted more of a muted green but they didn't have it in the style craft um, life so this one which is 100% um, acrylic but I think it will be fine because it has more of a fluff to it than the regular style craft DK and this is Highland Heathers and it's got a bit of texture to it as well which I liked so those are the colors that I'm going to use for my stocking and then for my husband's stocking <clears throat> I'm using Stylecraft Life DK and this color is copper right so that's what his will look like. The reason for the orange is my husband's Dutch and he loves orange. If I can get orange into everything, then orange there is. So he's going to have a red and shingle and copper, cardinal and shingle and copper stocking. So I will start with mine um, on the 1st of December get used to it, make all my mistakes, learn all my experience, my, what do they say? A mistake is not a mistake, it's a learning opportunity, so I shall use all my opportunities in my stocking and then his and uh, his will be a lot better, I'm sure. Uh, yes, there we go. What else have I purchased in the Yarny department? I think that was it. And what other works in progress have I got going on? Let me consult my list. Um... The last purchase that I made, <clears throat> which I didn't show you in my previous episode, was another one that I'd made at the um, Malvern Quilt Show. And uh, I'd like to show them to you now. I'm sure you'll enjoy having a look, even though they're autumn themed and we're now heading into winter or in the start of winter already. Uh, I'm sure you'll still like seeing a bit of fabric and a bit of colour. So. Um, very carefully to remain as tidy as I can this morning. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me, let me just have some tea. And I think I've done quite well in the not coughing and all that department, but I'm definitely feeling quite ropey. Any case, <clears throat> I've had this fabric for many years. I love it. I bought it at a time when I wasn't quilting, but I loved the fabric and I used it for my autumn decorating. Anyway, moving forward, I'm now venturing into quilting and my main style of quilting is hand piecing. And I've been doing quite a lot of hand piecing, um, especially following um, Emma Bradford's style and patterns. And, um, I thought this fabric would be so nice as a hand pieced table runner but I wanted to um, add some different fabrics with it and while I was at the Malvern Quilt Show I went past a stand by Palena Patchwork and fell in love with this little bundle of um, not little bundle little collection of fabrics that I put together into my own little bundle and those are the fabrics I chose. Now 
Now, the leafy one, I just couldn't leave, but it's not one that I plan on putting in with the pumpkin fabric, but I just couldn't leave it there. So this will probably go aside and be made into something else with whatever's left of these ones. But I think you'll agree that these go very well. Let me turn it around with these. Um, I don't know what the colorways or the names of the fabrics are, but I'll just show them to you up close. Now, for all you cross stitchers out there who need to do finishings into pillows and things, these fabrics will be brilliant for that purpose as well. So, <clears throat> if you're interested in any of these, Pop along to Palena Patchworks. Um, I'll show you up close, but I will link their details below. There we are. Pop onto her website and have a look and see what she's got available. And um, yeah, whether a quilter or a cross stitcher, I'm sure she'll have something there to finish off your projects for you. I think that's everything I needed to show you today or to talk to you about today. Let me just double check. Yeah, that's it. Um, so I will just say <clears throat> in wrapping up today, thanks for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this update for what I've been doing in November. Don't forget to stick around and watch the last little bits of video that I pop on the end uh, of my time in Scotland and also just some other bits and pieces. Don't forget to visit my website. I've got a few um, freebies on there that are perfect for winter cross stitching or winter crochet. Um, so if you go over to um, thistleheartcreations.co.uk, um, just head over to the free section, you'll find freebies um, for cross stitch and crochet. Um, there's a free snowflake, there's a free um, crochet star pattern. In fact, I have a little star here. I haven't blocked it yet, uh, but here it is. There's a free pattern for this little star. Let me just hide that tail. Cool. Um, there we are. There's a free pattern for that. And there's a whole lot of free cross stitch patterns for you <clears throat> in fact I can pull up my website and I can show them to you if you want to just give me two seconds um, so while you're chatting amongst yourselves let me know in the comments below what you're working on and what your plans are for Christmas in terms of crafting and stitching I'd, li I'd really like to know um, Okay, so let's put the ring light off again. <clears throat> There's my website. And then if you head over here, oh, I thought I could see it. You head over to your, the freebies section. And then you just select cross stitch. And then all my cross stitch freebies are listed here for you. Um, so there's the star, and then there's a whole lot of others that are available here for you to choose from. Right, <coughs> so that's it for November. I'm looking forward to December. I had given a brief thought to maybe doing Vlogmas, but I'm not 100% sure that I will. I haven't decided for definite yet. So you never know, you may see videos popping up. Um, if I do do it, it'll probably be once a week. I, I won't probably won't be doing once a day. Um, or I may decide not to stick to a routine for December at all. And just do videos as and when I when I can. 
So until then, um, well, I say until then, um, I'll be coming back at the end of December with a December update of what I've been making and uh, any gifts I've received for my birthday or for Christmas. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye out for the end of December. In the meantime, enjoy whatever it is you're doing. Try and relax about everything. I know this time of year can get a bit frantic. I, I know that I can certainly get whipped up into a whirlwind of uh, trying to do everything and just, yeah, running ahead of myself. Um, so yes, if you're anything like me, just take that time, take it easy, make lists if it helps, do all those things, take some time out to um, just reset yourself, catch your breath. Um, yeah, it's not meant to be a crazy time of year, is it? We're meant to, certainly in the Northern Hemisphere, we're meant to slow down and just uh, be cozy and read and do whatever we do indoors and just relax. Uh, I know things in the Southern Hemisphere are different because they're in the middle of summer, but I can only speak for where I am. And definitely December for me in winter time is about just settling down, slowing down. There's no gardening that needs to be done. There's no, you know, extra jobs around the house outside to do. Um, so yeah, try and embrace that. Um, and, and also in the Southern Hemisphere, I know you've got a lot going on. Again, just try and take those moments where you just get some time for yourself, catch your breath. So yes, happy crafting. And I will see you again at the end of December, if not, in amongst December unexpectedly. <laughs> All right then. Bye-bye.